I put an orchard in. See that opening? Looks like a door. Yeah. There was a door there. Sliding door. That's where the horses were. He had a uh, stall for two horses. And the the um, oxen were down below. This thing. You've been in here, right? Briefly, yes. You can actually see right here. Here's one artifact. What's that? Well, you have to, you have to, you have to dry the uh, tobacco. If you look here. See that little crotch and that board sticking up? Yeah. And you look up above, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's where the notches were. That's where that wood was I told you about. And then they had poles and then they pulled the, put the wood this way, put poles in and hung the, hung the uh, tobacco to dry. So they, one, two, three, four, in the attic, five. So what you're standing on was all filled up backwards. Like, uh, I guess putting eggs in a carton. Wow. Up on that, those are the bed springs that were in the house from the beds. And we had all uh, horsehair mattresses and downfill comforters. Wow. That picture of that lady may have been Susan Reynolds. To your right, that other lady might have been Frank's grandmother. They were both in the parlor. I never threw them away. And I'm selling them. So much. All of this, like inside here. Remember, I told you I, I keep everything. Uh huh. A lot of this stuff. If this isn't reflection, isn't bad. Not all of it mine. Some my wife's. But a lot of this stuff, I, I just, I see things that go really with my, with my railroad train. See the porter, two, two porters, and the, and the. Husband and wife, yeah. and the cattle, and all goes with my tracks. I mean, the railroad stations. Right. I built that little steam engine thing from a little kit. Where is it? Nice. There's a thermometer that would give me an alarm if it got too hot or too cold. I don't throw anything away. Bottles, glycerin, curry brushes. I don't know what that is, but I think it's chocolate. A misting bottle. I don't know. The, I don't know where I got these. That my crystal set. Oh wow! Gas mask from World War II. It was in there. No way. That's a separate one. That's mine. That was I picked up at a. Uh, what do you call them? Army surplus. Ah, oh, okay. Look at this stuff. I saved all the Marlboro and Camel. And I have cigarette paper in here because I used to roll Bull Durham. 
you know that. Yeah. Oh sure. Cowboy tobacco. What's in here? Uh, there's what's a pieces? lid. You know you want to. Oh right, when you pour your own. Uh, right, make your own shot or sinkers. Yeah, make your own shot or sinkers. What else? Here's a neat I got from a guy on Lake Horamog. It's a real Victorian lamp. I mean I I never never had one of these. People always took those first. This is a, in the house. But it's got its own stand. I have the ones that go on the you know holders on the window. This one, he calls it a railroad lamp. Really not. That was Frank's eel. Is that for mining? No, no. eel. Oh. Fishing eel. Really? That was his fishing lamp. So you fish for eels at night? Yeah. Wow. That's what, he told me that. Wow. He's not around to... <laughs> to, to, right, to confirm or deny. That's true. <laughs> What else here? Here's my K-Pro. Uh, my first computer. Shoot down in here. Let's see if we can see those. All those bottles probably were from the surface of the... When you, when you, when you leafened out the soil there in the, yeah. by the barn? And uh, I found bottles in the eaves, you know, warranted Pint flasks. Uh, wow. One There may be one here. Here. This is one. Warranted. Ah. Uh, Listen, I thought the guy was an alcoholic <laughs> until I started looking at all my wine bottles. And I said, well, we all... We all have our vices. We all do things that are different. Yes. And what a churn. The crank. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take the cover off. Oh, I can't do it to have it that, tied. That's okay. That's great. Kathy used this for yarn. Yeah. You buy the skeins and then. New skeins, yeah, right. And she. Whatever. Yeah. What else do I have that's of interest to me that I don't. I want to get tears in my eyes. <laughs> the seltzer bottles, those are cool. Those are come from my father-in-law from the Bronx, Riverdale. They had seltzer delivered. Oh, wow. That wasn't from this house. No. Laundry rack for drying your laundry. Right that's there. a, I, that's a folding towel rack or laundry rack. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you're correct. Washboard. Oh, more National Geographic's. Oh boy. Those, are, those go way back. Way back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 1923. Here's a collection. It's a beauty. This I got from a. Before the Housatonic Railroad got reclaimed. Okay. This is one of their whistles. Oh, really? Train whistle? Yep. I never had a compressor big enough. I know it whistles, but I couldn't blow it. I don't have a compressor big enough. Wow. So I'm going to sell it. My father was a teacher. I got the, uh, oh, you can't read that, can you? Yeah, Edison? Yeah. Yeah, that's wax roll player. What else? Watch these planks, man. Yeah. Some of the chestnut, some of who knows what. <laughs> Here, I, I don't know where I got this. This is a hula skirt, a real one. Where is that? Made in Hawaii? Oh, why? Yeah, wait a minute. There's the bottom of it. 
Wow. How did I get that? Probably somebody had it, was finished with it. Might have been from a musical. Couldn't resist. Oh, these are the Saturday Evening Posts you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, let, oh let me give you a shot. Oh my lord. Wow. Look at this. You take one from the top. Oh, you're crapping them up there. Oh, the, yeah, the, the bats. 1944. Ringing from the dinner. Wow. Oh, man. Oh, dude, look how deep they go. Wow. And that's over in 43. Take a look and you shoot that one. Yeah, that's a great military cover. Did you do this one? I didn't. What's the story with this painting? Oh, I'll tell you. And uh, I went to Cornell my sophomore year, rented an apartment with uh, two other guys, three other guys. And then we used to have breakfasts with the girls. You know, we could get them out of the dorm for breakfast. So we'd have a breakfast party on Sunday. And then sometimes it go all day and we made notice the width of that paper that's a brown paper wrapping that piece that the original piece probably goes from here to that other that face oh, okay like deli paper kind of like on a roller yeah a big roller yeah and what we had oh that's watercolor so everybody has to talk to Yeski what do you want to say? Themed. Conjure. Themed, yes. Yeah. The Russian Dusty author Esker. Yeah. of uh, the revolution. But it goes, see the uh, guy with the gun? Yeah. And uh, taking a hole in the minister. That was the most interesting part. It's folded back, goes a little further. I think there was a tree with a hanging rope. And then it keeps going into a hillside with a cemetery. Wow. I don't have that piece. I just took the good one and I bought a frame big enough to hold that and I've kept it. And I'm selling it because nobody really, uh, people might appreciate that, but Mike, I don't know if the guys I was roommates with are still alive. It was a, let's see, there were about, I guess it was about 12 of us, six guys and six girls. We each did a portion. Somebody did trees. One guy did the house. Somebody did the cemetery. Somebody did the people. Somebody did the sky. It was a team effort for that breakfast team with effort. the uh, with And the with a lot of wine and booze. This is a good Franklin. A little rusty. Right, but yep. Don't get drop heat. Works fine. I don't know what those are. Clamps? Well, whatever. Uh, no, there must be forms to put right. the casting in. Huh. I want to show you this. stove right here you can get a good shot of it this was in the cottage Will Hour when he did sales closings came out of the Warren schoolhouse so it's a Warren schoolhouse stove wow. now, I don't know if it's brick schoolhouse he never would answer This was a floor put in, in this section. This was the strongest part of the floor because this is where the hay was stored for the oxen and the, and the team of horses. Here's Frank's refrigerator. It ran until I could 
so I can afford it. No one. Here's your dare. Oh boy. Ah, the grapple. Can't have that. My son right. wants that back. I'm a BOAG teacher, and we taught welding. We had adult classes. From my son to Housatonic, and he wanted to make a grapple. And you know my son, Will, he made that. Wow. My family, oh wait, thank you. Peach baskets I collected, people throwing them away. Oh, my girlfriend gave me this demi cast set. Some of this is real old. Some of this is new. That. that picture was in the house. Every bedroom had a washstand yeah. with a bowl and a potty. A chamber pot. Indoor plumbing, you might say. Yes. <laughs> well, if you caught short, you got a. Oops, you got to do something. That's my father's table saw. That's the uh, 50s. This one right, let's see, oh, okay, it's all. Joiner and a. Oh, joiner and a, yeah. What else is there? A mini tobacco uh, boxes from, like, Rooney. This is a candy company. But over there, Hartford tobacco boxes with Bill Willauer when he took over this barn, filled it up with all kinds of stuff. He used it as storage for things for the uh, brandy milk and the cake shop. I run my office. Sure. Sure. Uh, I don't know if you want to come in here. Why? <laughs> oh, this is, uh, well, you know, I know this is all not for sale, but uh, yeah. what, a, what a wonderful collection it is. Right here, right now. Yeah. Here's an example for you that you'll maybe coalesce the thought. Of course, this is a Christmas box. This picture is an uncle I never knew. And it hung in my garage on Long Island because my father and mother during the Depression allowed, allowed, invited my grandparents, my mother's mother and father, and sisters that weren't married, and brother. And he was about a little older than that on Long Island. And this was, was a, a 1920s, uh, what do you call it? Housing development, but a real nice one. All I call a pseudo tutor. 40 by 100, but a wonderful house. They were all living in there, and he had a bicycle and riding around and he was all constructing other homes. And he got hit in the head by a construction truck that had a rod sticking out. And he killed him. So I don't know this guy, but he's my uncle. I have it. I'm the last of the first generation, you know, from Sicily. He was, I think he was born here. My aunt Elvira was born here in 1914, 1915. So this, he might have been born in 20. So he got wiped in. That'll be after, after the Depression. 
Even though the thirteenth rock on them. Right, he looks so like I, it. I don't, I don't, I don't have them. I only have them on the nineteen thirties census. Right. So he was alive. That's it. Some people say I hoard, but you notice I don't say say the same stuff. No, I think. But what I, I, you know, I see these from time to time. What are these? Oh, you know what they are? Yeah, those are maple syrup spiles. Okay. This is the end goes in the tree. It butts up. You have to drill a, okay. a three eighths hole, and then you that's a hang for the bucket. Chip, chip. Tell me the give me give me the five minute history of this property. Okay, we'd have to go back to uh, the '60s uh, when I changed my job as county agent, came into New Milford, and uh, was living at my parents. And I had by that time accumulated a Model A Ford and a uh, I was a sedan and a Model A Roadster. The sedan ran. The Roadster didn't. I also had accumulated a nice 1900 sailboat and I was putting it on my parents' property. And I've always been collecting since I was a kid. You know, tchotchke, junk things, matchbooks, all that kind of stuff. So, one day, in about 1965, I said, I got a get a place to rent for my own and put my trunk in there. I need books I had, trunks and crap I've been accumulating only because I would pick them up. I'd say, yeah, that's interesting, that's nice. Oh, somebody will love this in 50 years. So I, anyhow, come down the hill and I look, I say, you know, there's a barn. It's got the door away from the road and it's, people can always see somebody going in and out. I'll see if the guy wants to rent this, or whoever owns it. So I drove up the road and uh, stopped at the house here, kind of abandoned, and the uh, place looked funny now. So I went up the road to the next house, and the lady said, oh yeah, that's uh, Mr. Benedict's house. I says, well, where is, where is he? He said, oh, he lives up the road to the next house with his aunt. I said, oh, really? I went up to the next house, and I know from being a county agent, you never go to the front door. So I went around the back, I could see the path. Banged on the door. This old guy, about my age now, with a beard, it looked like he was seven feet tall, came to the door and said, yeah, what do you want? And I said, well, do you own the house down there in the barn? He said, yeah. I said, well, uh, I'm interested in it. You know, I'd like to, you know, uh, maybe rent it, rent the barn or whatever. He said, yeah. I said, well, uh, he said, well, I'd want to sell it, he said. I said, well, how much you want for it? And he said, oh, about $9,000. I said, oh, that's a house in a barn? He said, yeah. Long story short, I brought my parents, visited it, and uh, the house and the barn, and bought it. Not then in there, but with a handshake. Uh, bought the place, but when I went in the barn, and I saw, he said, well, I'll leave you all my garden tools. I'll leave you my my garden uh, little uh, you know walk behind plow and the attachments and uh, all my carpenter's tools. Everything is upstairs. Everything is down here. All yours, and you can have. So at that point, I had all the room I wanted, but it had a car in it. But it had room. But it had room, if I moved the car, it had room for my two Model A's and my sailboat. So that was good. And uh, 
that's when it started. Because then all the crap I collected, I could put into place. Upstairs, downstairs, in the house. So that was the beginning. So what about these two pieces, this barn and this little cottage? Well, uh, Brandy Mill Antique Shop dealer, Amy Willauer, was the uh, antique dealer. And Bill had built this addition they were sitting in and had bought the place that was that room without the bathroom in two bedrooms, and that's where he lived. He was a livery man. He had a team of horses and a team of oxen, kept them in the tobacco barn. And I think uh, his father owned that building that you look at across the street, which is a, a cider mill. So he made cider and made brandy. The cider mill became a a general store with a gasoline station and Amy got married to Bill in 1930 and she ran that as an antique shop and they put Route 225 in so that was hot stuff no longer a blacktop right and it went all the way to uh, well I guess Tarrington and then eventually that's Route 202. Now, yes. Right, but then it was... Route 25. Really? And before that, it was a main road, the old time road, that was the main road. But this whole mill road was the main road. Really? Wow. Because people would get stuck in the sand going up the incline. And this was a nice little road, no hill. Interesting. And anyhow. So how did you get this house? How did and, I get it? And the, and the tobacco barn. Well, I always wanted it, but he lived here, and he wouldn't sell it. And his wife had gotten that piece of land behind you as a gift from her father. Her father was an inventor. He invented the screw light bulb fixture. Really? The brass. And he lived down in Stanford, Bridgeport. And he also, see the big chain up there? Mm -hmm. That was his invention. The pole chain? Yeah, the pole chain and the switch and the light fixture. What was his name? Uh, God. Was it Hubble? Hmm? Wasn't Hubble, was it? No, no. Okay. Oh, oh I'll remember it. The married name is Will Hour. My wife remembers the name. That's okay. Anyhow, that's what he did. And so she had stipend from him. She didn't you know, work. She was an interior designer and did the interior of the Ford Trimor and a lot of other stuff. What? So she and Kathy both went to the same school, but not at the same time. And one day, Bill said, well, I just going to send, sell this to the leather man over in uh, Southbury at the Bazaar. Remember that? He did leather work. And I said, oh, Jesus. You know, when, when are you going to do that? It was this. And so I told my wife. My wife called Amy. I said, how come you didn't ask us? I said the same thing to Bill. How come you didn't ask me? I'm right here. No, so you can't afford it. So I, I said, well, what can I afford? He said, $10,000. He says, I'll buy it. So I went to the same place that I got the money for that. And I, by the way, got it for $8,000. Five hundred dollars. But remember, I had no toilet, had no heat, had a light bulb in every room. Same thing here. No toilet, no heat, and a light bulb in every room. So I bought it. And I had more room to put it in. 
excuse me, things. And uh, this became my office for my business, Northeast Tree Pond Turf Service. But I was a teacher at the same time. That's how I got this. Romance, love story. 